What's up? Dysfunctionally Functional Life with Tam Collins. I know, I know. You guys don't even, you don't even have to say it. I know. I, my hair. <laughs> why is it like that? <laughs> I know what most of you must be thinking. Well, why is your hair like that? Girl. Well, because of the pandemic, I let my hair go for about a year. That dark. Root. Dark root. It was all the way down my back. The blonde. See that white blonde? There was about, I don't know, six or eight more inches of that. It was all the way down my back. The old job my hairdresser had done. And then my natural hair had grown dark and out. And it was just so long, dead ends, stagnant, brown, getting some gray. It was just too much. So about a month ago, I decided I would start learning to bleach my own hair. Like really delve into it, learn the process. I knew there was going to be some trial and error and, you know, learning. And I know that going from super dark like this, back up, it's going to take two or three bleachings. I knew that much. So when I let it down, it's actually a little bit lighter on the top. It looks more blonde. When I pull it back up, yeah. So this top part is what I got after two different bleachings and then giving it time to rest and repair in between. That's the old job that my hairdresser did well over a year ago. And so what I'm waiting for is a couple more weeks of resting on my hair. You know, I put a nice um, conditioner on it and let that soak in, coconut oil, just to repair the damage that bleach does. And here within a couple weeks, I'm going to take it up all the way. I'm gonna put the third bleach job on it and it's gonna come all the way up, hopefully. It'll take me a while to get it all evened out, but it's cool. And I'm learning new things, so hey, I'm rocking what I got right now. That's dysfunctionally functional for you. Make it work. Anyway, I've got a few minutes. Um, I am about to go back to work and I'm about to finish my cheddar bacon baked potato with chives that I got from Wendy's at lunch and I only ate about half of it and I'm still hungry. I really need to check the time, but I can't do that while I'm recording. It will stop. Um, so anyway, I was just thinking about the past five to six years of my life and wow, what a blur it kind of is, how fast it went and kind of what happened to me and I've been examining it and who's responsible for what and what went wrong and where did I make the mistakes and you know what could I have done better and what should I have done all those things there's just so much that happened within the last five or six years unbelievable um, and at some point on the channel here I'm gonna go into the story of my addiction and I don't really bring it up a whole lot about the time I was an addict, I became an addict, because <clears throat> mine's a little different than most stories. And really, I was the last person in the world that anyone ever expected to become addicted. And it didn't last very long. It came on suddenly. It lasted long enough, you know, to... to majorly set me back in life but um, thankfully it didn't last forever and ever I was able to get into a program and get off of the drug that I became addicted to but I don't bring it up a whole lot because I don't know it is something that I do want to talk about at some point but you know I got that under control a long long while back and I really just don't have the mentality for it. It's just not what I think of. It's not where I want to be. It's not, that whole life was not for me and it never was. You know, and I have so many other important issues that I want to focus on because Jesus Christ, you know, for one, I'm sick of addiction. I grew up with it all over me all the time. 
and my father. And then for years and years and years growing up with other people, my first husband was alcoholic, which he quit after we got married. Um, a series of relationships with alcoholic, just, you know, addicts. It's all in my family. It, 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 you know, and I separated out once I got older and had my children. I never did become addicted. Thank God. In my early years, all the way up until age 38. Never. Thank God. You know, I knew better than to mess around with any of that shit. Now, I did do some experimenting in my teens. I smoked a lot of pot. And I did smoke crack two or three times when I was 17 years old. Yes. I tried it two or three times. Um, but I didn't like it. After a couple times, it was like, no, this shit is not for me. Oh, my God. You know, and the people I was around at the time... They were blowing hundreds and hundreds of dollars on that stuff and just smoking it until they just couldn't hold anymore. And I just thought, wow, I, I would be afraid I would die of a heart attack or something. I can't be like them. You know, and I was very minimal about it. Even as a teenager, when it came to drugs and substances, I had some kind of sick sense about me. Now, I might have been a little wild and I was a runaway and I would hit the streets and I was tough and this, that and the other. When it came to getting fucked up out of my mind, I'm not having it. Don't even try it. Now, I did drink alcohol, and I did like to drink. But even with that, not in my teens. I, I, you know, when I was in situations where I had to look out, pay attention, I didn't start getting what I would call drunk until I got a little older, you know? Now, I, I did drink some alcohol. I did. I did. I put some alcohol down, but... um. Not something that I used to avoid life. I never became addicted. And not something to where I could say I was just effed up out of my mind all the time. So, you know, because in my younger years, starting around age 12, when I was hitting the streets and running away, I had to pay fucking attention. And here's where I was different from a lot of other kids. A lot of other people in their teens and early years. They were all so busy trying to get fucked up out of their heads and escape the pain that had been put on them through substances, get away from abusive or neglectful or whatever was going on at home, or just experimenting out there and wanting to fit in, whatever it was they were doing. That is where I was a little different. By the time 12 rolled around, I wasn't giving a damn about fitting in anymore. Not with the little kiddos at my school. Nope. I was already out hitting the streets, running with an older crowd. I didn't need their fucking little approval anymore with their little school cliques. All that stuff happened to me, yeah. And within one year after hitting junior high, within less than one year, I was out of there. I was already grown. I mean, it was weird. Um, but, yeah, no, I never did turn to substances. I smoked a lot of pot running away and all that stuff. But I usually kept a very clear head about me. I needed to tune in to what the fuck was going on around me. I needed to be on guard, man. Because if I was just a little girl, man. And if I didn't watch out for myself, nobody was going to. It just really all depended on who I was around. And if I could trust them or not. But you know, I had to really have a sense about me. Out there hitchhiking and looking for rides. And trying to get from place to place. And... I had to pick up on people's energy quickly to know, look, do I need to bail out? Do I need to, do I need to run now? And there were several instances where I had to use those instincts and use them quickly. And I will be talking about some of that on my channel in the future. Um, instances where I was held at knife point. Um, some pretty scary things that happened to me out there on the run between the ages of 12 and 14. Um, yeah. I got into some, some tough shit, but you know, I must have had an angel riding on my back or around me because think about it, 12, 13, 14 years old, out there doing that in a fairly large city, fairly decent sized city, there are so many children that are never seen or heard from again, that are found, murdered, and horrible things happen to them, and I'm just so thankful, I just know that ever since I was a little girl, there was a presence with me. There was a guiding 
force, an intuition, a deeper knowing, uh, a compass of sorts. Something was protecting me and giving me the smarts, the energy, perception, and the knowledge to get through all that shit, man. And I listened to it. So I had to stay pretty clear-minded. That's the point. <clears throat> and I never had an interest in hard drugs. I just really didn't. Mm -mm, I don't want your acid or your mushrooms or, you know, your cocaine and your heroines and uh, whatever the hell everybody was doing out there back from the 80s on up, the ecstasies and I don't even know what all they're doing now. You know, it's just, I didn't have any interest in it. In fact, I was phobic of it. Mm -mm, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm gonna die. No, I don't want that. <laughs> you know, I did run into a couple of occasions where someone laced the joint that I smoked. Two different occasions that happened to me. And it was horrific. I will tell you about those in the future. It was pretty funny looking back, but not because it could have been deadly. <sighs> um, but yeah. Just crazy times, man. But all in all, I never got addicted to drugs. And then when I was 19, I found out I was pregnant with my first child. And his father and I ended up getting married the next year. And we had another child. And I had both of my children by the age of 21. So I went into motherhood and I didn't drink, I didn't do drugs. I was squeaky clean, y'all, and I had even quit smoking pot. I smoked pot from age 12 until almost 18, and at the age of 17, just about to turn 18, I started having such severe panic attacks. That's when I had my first panic attack and noticed my anxiety disorder becoming more prevalent. I dropped pot, fuck that, I got off everything. I was scared. You know, which pot was the only thing I ever did, really, but at that point. Um, and then I did mention, yes, the two to three times that I did experiment with smoking crack, which is an awful thing. It was awful then. It's awful now. Um, it made my throat go numb. Like, literally, I could not swallow. I guess I got smoked a little bit too much one night, which I was always very careful. Um, but next thing I know, my th I cannot swallow. It feels like my throat is paralyzed. And I'm like 17. I went outside, y'all. I'm doing laps around the yard. I'm praying to God. Please, God, let me come down. Please let this wear off. Please let me live. I will never, ever do anything like that ever, ever again. And I ended up being okay, and I kept my promise. I never, ever did anything like that again. In fact, I quit smoking pot right after that, too. Now... I have smoked pot a few times throughout the last 20 years or so, but not very often. I don't like it. It's not for me. It doesn't do me like it does everyone else. It puts me in some whole other warped dimension. I'm not judging for whoever loves it and, and can relax with it. That's great. I wish I could. Maybe one day I will again. But for now, I don't like it. I don't do it. It just doesn't do right for me. Ooh, scary. But <clears throat> when I was 38 years old, after raising my children, and, you know, I had been around, surrounded by addicts, alcoholics for years. Um, it's just not something I did. I did drink, but within moderation. You know, I had children to raise. I was going to college. I was wanting to do something with myself. I had to be an example to children. And I had to be, I was the only one in charge. I had to run shit. So I couldn't just lay around getting messed up all the time. It's not something... And you know, even with all the pain that I endured as a child, the abuse, the twisting and manipulating and all the things that I went through, I never craved substances to, to deal with my pain. I can honestly say that. I hardly ever thought, damn, I need to get high because I'm in so much pain. Or damn, I need to get drunk. I just can't cope with this. No, not to cope, because I just knew, common sense, what the fuck is that going to do? What is getting drunk off my ass or getting high right now going to do to solve my problem, to help me cope? 
It's not. It's not a good solution. It's not going to do anything. Nobody's going to care. It's not like I'm just going to end up sick, hungover. Nobody's going to see this. Nobody's going to give a damn. And when I wake up the next day, it's still going to be there. The same damn problem I have to cope with. So sorry. I never did crave substances to cope with my pain, my sorrow, depression, stress, or anxiety. In fact, I was super phobic about all that shit for years. Even my therapist tried to medicate me for my anxiety disorder, and I could, I, I took Paxil for one week, and I was so paranoid about it, I had to get rid of it. I just couldn't do it. It was, I, I hardly would take a Tylenol, you know? And so, After the years and years went by, um, you know, I would go out for drinks over the years, and I did enjoy drinking some. I would drink vodka, and I drank a lot of vodka in my mid-childhood, pre-teens and early teens, mid-teens. That was introduced by my father. There were times that I did drink quite heavily, um, and then... You know, but it never became an addiction or an obsession or something that I turned to to cope with pain or really turned to it for any damn reason. I don't know. It was introduced to me, though, as a child. Yes, alcohol. And there were a number of years that I did drink. I'll have to explain all that later. As far as my dad was concerned and giving it to me. Um, but, you know, as I got on into my mid to late 20s. I started working in a lot of bars and restaurants, and I did go out on weekends, and I wanted to learn a different way than what I was taught growing up, and what I saw growing up, and what a lot of the people I had been around acted like. I'm going to get drunk. I hate that. So what? Oh, okay. I can't stand that shit. Um, but that was kind of the mentality, you know, when I was growing up with my dad and, and then the people I kind of ran around with in my younger years. Young, immature people talk like that. And a lot of alcoholics and addicts, well, what are they doing? They're stunting their mental and emotional growth, so they're all immature most of the time, right? Gonna get high, gonna get drunk. I just really never developed that mentality. I just saw no point in it and I had other things on the mind. A lot of them swear that certain drugs are helping them to be more creative and to get in touch with different things. Hey, man, that's on y'all. If that's what y'all think and that works for you, and as long as it's not hurting other people, <clears throat> and you're not having to steal, rob, kill, and blind, you know, to get your drugs, and you're not hurting other people, you're not taking shit out on them, you're not using them, laying on them, you don't need anybody else, you can maintain your habits then okay. If it's putting you in touch with whatever you think it is, then that's fine. I'm not going to judge that. I won't say anything about that. But, um, I never needed it for those purposes. I prefer to have a really clean system, as clean as I possibly could. I do smoke cigarettes. That's a nasty habit that I plan to get rid of. Um, but other than that, I just didn't want my system clouded. I felt like drugs and alcohol were clouding me and they it would break the connection to any type of spiritual connect, the energy that I needed to really tune in and feel things and feel energies and, and hear my intuition, be able to really hear that inner knowing. I personally feel like those substances disconnect people from that stuff. I really do. And it depending on how severe their addiction is, it opens a portal. Alcohol is a fucking depressant, you know? And for a depressed person, oh my God, it just, I feel like a lot of that shit opens a, a dark portal, a way for the negative and dark energies to enter, you know, if a person stays in that state too long. So I personally, most of my life, I just didn't want to go that route. I didn't need it. I didn't want it. That was not for me. But, <clears throat> Um, and over the years, you know, as I got late 20s, early 30s, I wanted to learn to drink in a responsible way. Not in the old way I'd been taught, get drunk. No, I didn't want to get drunk anymore. 
Now, I did quite a bit growing up, yeah. I'll tell you guys about all that later. But I wanted to be able to go out to a bar and have something to eat, have a glass of wine, have a few cocktails. I got involved with some different types of people in my mid-twenties or so that taught me these things. You know, um, that we're going to have some cocktails with our meal and we're not going to do it the addict way like my dad was. We're not going to get out here and guzzle alcohol on an empty stomach just to get drunk. No. So, you know, that's who I was up until I lost, I really lost interest in alcohol at about 35 or 36 years old. I drank, you know, off and on in my adult life and sometimes I got a nice little chill feeling or a buzz here and there, but I really tried to keep it to a social drinking level or having some cocktails, you know, moderate, moderation, balance, yeah. And uh, then when I was 38 years old, let's see, my father passed away when I was 35, and I remember I was still drinking a little bit at 35, 36. Maybe twice a month, I would get a little craving or something for a nice cocktail, and I would go out and have a couple of drinks at that age, and then it just kind of faded away from me. I just, I had been around too many drop dead down alcoholics. I'd been through too much shit with people and alcohol. And I was getting older, and my body just just wasn't agreeing with it. It just didn't make me feel good anymore. I didn't want it, didn't need it. And then when I was 38, I had three abscessed teeth come up in my mouth in the summer that year, right before my 38th birthday, actually. Yep. And I had to go to the dentist, and I was in a tremendous amount of pain. And I had never taken painkillers before, other than when I was in the hospital having my children, and they would shoot me up with Demerol or whatever the hell they were giving me for pain management. I remember a couple times in my life having medically supervised drugs like morphine, Demerol, stuff like that, and I remember what it felt like. And I was so phobic all those years. I didn't want to feel funny. I didn't want to feel out of my head, out of control. So I stayed away from all that kind of stuff. But to my knowledge, I had never by mouth ingested a painkiller. In fact, yes, I had had teeth worked on and pulled in my 20s. I threw my prescriptions away. Always. I didn't, I didn't need them. I, didn't, I just got by on ibuprofen or whatever and my teeth healed up fine. I never got those prescriptions filled. Um, but when I was in my 38th year, everything changed. And something that I never in a million years thought would happen to me happened. The family curse is what it felt like. Because addiction spread from my father to every single sibling that I have, and I have five siblings, two have passed away. But yes, I have five sibs. I had five siblings, and I was the only one who did not have an addiction to substances. The only one, all those years, other than cigarettes. So I went to the dentist and they gave me these pain pills, you know, hydrocodone. I remember the day it happened. I remember what was going on and I'm going to run short on time on this video, but I'll continue this in a part two. Um, my brother had passed away that week, my older brother, and I had this horrible abscess and I was in so much fear. This tooth pain was worse than any I'd ever had in history. I was used to toothaches and having to deal with bad teeth and getting them pulled and worked on over the years, but this one was like nothing I'd ever experienced before. I had been up for almost three days by the time I got to go to the dentist. And I was so scared that crushing pain was gonna come back. They gave me an antibiotic 
and they prescribe the hydrocodone. And you know, I was going to throw those hydrocodones down. I don't take, I don't need that shit. You know, I thought, uh, I'll be all right. I'll get the antibiotics going. And I was so scared that, that the pain was coming back that I ended up allowing myself to take one of the hydrocodones. You know, as directed on the bottle. I was really nervous about it, too. I remember, I think I called my sister up to talk to her about it, you know. And I'm like, hey, I have been in so much pain, agony. I haven't slept. I'm really scared to take one of these. Uh, I couldn't think of the name at the time. I didn't really know what they were, what it was going to do to me, how it was going to make me feel. But I needed to to make sure I wasn't going to get back into the pain I was in and I was, it was going to come back, you know. They had given me something at the dentist's office, but that was going to wear off and I needed to give those antibiotics time to get in my system. So I ended up taking one of the hydrocodones. And I don't know what it was about that day, the star alignment, that time in my life, but once I swallowed that pill, about 30 minutes later, once that pill got into my bloodstream and digested and, you know, it hit me. And I was like, oh, wow. So this is why everybody's so crazy about these things. This is why my father died basically because of his opiate addiction in the end of his life. This is what everybody's so strung out on. This is what everybody's so obsessed over. Wow. And now I kind of know why. And all of a sudden it hit my brain like that, you know, and I don't know. I guess everything came rushing back to me. My past trauma. My father had passed away at this point my, in 2012. This was 2015. I was 38. Now my older brother had passed away that week. I had all of that going on. And I was involved in... I won't even call it a relationship back then. I was involved in a terrible situationship. With a very nasty, abusive person. It was horrible. And I thank God I kept my distance from him. I had my own place. I wasn't trapped with him. But, so all of that was going on that year. But you know, it was, it was weird to me because a lot of shit had been going on a lot of years and I never got addicted to drugs. Never turned to drugs, never asked for drugs, never wanted them. But here we are. I guess maybe it was the perfect storm. The tooth hurting so bad that I finally had to break down and take something. And then me having the family genetic that I have <clears throat> for addiction, I don't know. Perhaps it was just the perfect storm and the perfect alignment of things. Once I took that pill, after that, I developed a three-year addiction to opiates. And I know to some people that's not much. And thank God it wasn't much. I know some people have been addicted 15, 20 years. <clears throat> lifelong. It's a horrific thing. But for me, three years was three years of my life too long. And all that happened in that time and all that happened as a result of that addiction afterwards. So I'm very thankful that it was no longer than that and that I never really had it long enough to let that addict mentality really soak in on me. You know, oh, it was getting there, and I could see it all coming. I knew where that was going. I knew where it was going to end. So, thank God, you know, I will talk to you guys later on about how I decided to quit and the, the process that I used to get ready to quit and all that happened to me after that. I will come back in a second part of this and talk to you guys more about it. Um... But yeah, it was a very shocking thing for me. So I'm sure there's some of you out there that can relate to that, that you never were an addict. And all of a sudden, man, accidentally, that's how bad opiates are. You can accidentally become addicted to them. And um, 
that's kind of what happened. Although I did make a conscious choice to keep taking them beyond what I was prescribed. Um, just something about my ge uh, genetics, my addicted family, and all the trauma I've been through, and uh, I proceeded from there. But thank God I was able to get into a program and get clean. Um, guys, I'm going to clip this off right here. And please join me for part two of this, and I will finish telling you about my time with addiction.